talk about bad timing. As the holiday shopping rush kicks off, protests kick in. Black Lives Matter protesters blocking stores in Chicago and pro-union protesters said to be targeting Walmart stores across the country. But with retailers already struggling for business, could all this backfire on the economy? Hi everyone, I'm Brenda Butner. This is Bulls and Bears. Here they are, the Bulls and Bears this week. Gary B. Smith, Jonas Max Ferris, John Layfield, along with Lisa Booth and Chuck Rocha. Welcome to everybody. So Lisa, Hi, the Brenda. economy is already rocky as we head into the holiday shopping season. Now add in protests and re at retailers, what's that mean? Well, and it's incredibly problematic for the retailers, especially in the month of November, because they're expected to do 20 to 40 percent of their annual retailers are expected to do 20 to 40 percent of their annual sales in that month alone. But look, I think it's important to look at these uh, movements in itself, because their objective here is to intimidate people and to disrupt. And if you look at a movement like Black Lives Matter, the entire movement, their focus is on, you know, to, to about cop killing. Their focus is uh, you know, and things like that. And if you look at the, the minimum wage protest as well, they've already gotten what they want from Walmart. Walmart went and headed and enacted a minimum wage increase, but it's never going to be enough for them. Well, Chuck, does this just mean more online shopping? I mean, a lot of people don't head into the brick and mortar stores anymore. Well, here's the, here's the question. If a protest happens in the woods and falls, does anybody hear it? The first thing they teach us liberals in Protest 101 is go to where the people are. You've got to be there. You've got to be seen because people want to see what the issue is about. So you want to be there. You want to be disruptive, but you also want to be respectful. I think that all of these organizations are trying to bring an important issue to light and good for them to go into the place where we're talking about it on Saturday morning and making sure people are bringing these issues to the forefront. And these retailers have lost most of their shopping to online people like me who don't want to be in there fighting with folks when the doors open anyway. Well, you know, John, Chuck brings up a good point because this is a pretty smart strategy for these protesters. Um, and so it may continue. What kind of impact do you expect it to have on the holiday shopping season? I don't expect it to have that much. I think Chuck is right about the fact most people are going to online. You look at stocks uh, like uh, Walmart. Walmart is uh, at a three-year low right now. You look at something like, say, Under Armour, which is I own, by the way, which is up three times over the last few years, Nike up two and a half times. People are still buying products. They're still buying the LeBron James sneakers. They're still buying the Stephen Curry sneakers. But where they buy it is different. They're shifting to online. You see Macy's and Nordstrom reporting uh, sales that are down. People saying that uh, Thursday and Friday this, this week that traffic uh, was down significantly. This to me is simply the Amazon effect. Uh, I think it's people are still buying stuff. It's just where they're buying. Did the protests help? Absolutely not. I, I mean, if you go to a store and you see a bunch of people yelling, and screaming, uh, odds are you may turn around. Uh, these protests really aren't that big, though. And, and I'm not sure that people will turn around. I mean, on Black Friday, we have seen people stampede, push open doors. In fact, seven people since, what is it, uh, 2006 have been killed in almost 100 injuries. So are protesters really going to stop anybody? No, I agree with John. Protesters aren't going to stop anyone except maybe the retailers, the, the, uh, the brick and mortar retailers. Look, Brenda, the whole protest reminds me of when the Detroit union workers over the years wanted higher and higher wages, and they got them and finally brought their industry down. That's what I see happening now in retail, because most of these protests are direct at the McDonald's and the Walmart, where most of the retail resides. We've already seen it affect teen unemployment. It went from like uh, 16 to 26 percent after the last wage hike and so we have one of two things either they employ less and less people and unable to give less and less service or they eventually have to raise costs just like Detroit did and go out of business we already have competition as others have pointed out Chuck uh, primarily in the online area where do you think people are going to go if Walmart has to raise prices because of they're having to pay higher wages. They're going to go to the Amazons in the world. So in the end, it's going to be the retailers and employment that gets hurt. Hmm. Jonas, where do you fall on this issue? Well, I understand what Chuck's saying about you want to have a protest where people, you know, if they did it in places where there weren't people, then nobody would know they had the protest. But you got to be careful. Like, some protests might just not get to your goals. I mean, if you shut down retailers, ultimately, 
Does that make the wage inequality problem go away, or does it just move it out of your vision because it's all online shopping now? You don't see all the wage inequality. It's kind of like one time they protested worker conditions, but you know we've basically moved those. We've outsourced all the sweatshops. They didn't go away. They're in other countries that we don't get to see the visible bad work conditions, and you wouldn't want that to happen either. It's not a, a fix for low wages. Is getting, is putting stores out of business, and it's all online behind in warehouses, some giant place at Amazon either. So I wonder if their goals are going to work long haul with these problems they're raising. And Chuck, what do you think about the, the issues that both Gary Vee and Jonas brought up, that basically these protests could be hurting the very people they're supposed to help because retailers may fire people, they may not be hiring, um, and the minimum wage won't go up? Well, I own a small business, and I think that that's part of the competition when you're trying to evaluate your business model. I think times are changing. I think that I'm a prime example that times are changing. I mean, I'm one of the few people on TV who know how to crank a tractor from the front, but I buy my fishing <laughs> shirts now online. So that tells you that things have changed, and we've come a long way in a short amount of time, and you have to evolve. I'll yeah. evolve. Well, well I, but, know but that Brandon, I know that but, John knows how to crank a tractor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think me and, me and Chuck may be the only ones that have uh, spent a lot of time on a tractor. Uh, every country song is written about a tractor for some reason. Uh, that, that, it's me and Chuck. Uh, look, the Gary B. Uh, very eloquently and accurately has described this in the past about thing, people like Walmart. Walmart is responding to free market, and, and this is how it should be. They're going to be at $10 an hour in 2016. Their average wage right now is $13 an hour. They're spending a billion dollars over the next year raising salaries and training people because they want customer service. They want it to be better. They've grown about according to GDP over the last number of years. The last time they were in high single digits growth was in 2008. They're responding to this. I, I don't understand why these people are protesting Walmart. They're raising wages and they're doing all the things that you want a retailer to do. I know why they're protesting because they want the 2.2 million workers that there to unionize. It's a matter of survival. Well, Walmart, Walmart went from $9 to $10 as a starting wage, but it's not up to 50 15 as everybody else, uh, as, as they're hoping for. Gary B., I'm sorry, I know you wanted to get in, but I wasn't sure that you were the tractor driver of the group. <laughs> no, I'm not. <laughs> Unless it'd be like those, one of those little kid type tractors. <laughs> I think I might have had one of those. But, you know, Chuck brings up an interesting point. But the, but the fact is, I'm willing to venture, Chuck has no minimum wage people working for him. So he's insulated from that. It's the small retailer that's hiring the, the minimum wage person. The other thing is, Chuck mentioned he went to protest 101. The problem with protest 101 is they don't teach economics in that. When you charge more for something, people consume less. When you have higher wages, you have less unemployment. For those people out there wanting minimum wage, you should flip it around and say, hey, how would you like uh, uh, the uh, unemployment amongst teens to go up 10%? Yeah, then, then you would say, geez, you know, maybe this is kind of a stupid idea. But maybe that's what they should add, Chuck, to Protest 101, how economics works. Okay, uh, Chuck, you got 20 seconds to respond. I just wish I'd have got paid something when I was in that darn class. I couldn't figure out why we didn't make a real good salary. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. And Cavuto on Business in about 20 minutes from now. Hey, Neil, what do you got? Hey, Brenda, exactly why are my interviews with the president's former defense secretaries prompting a White House response? You're about to find out. And forget terrorists getting into airports. Why a top Homeland Security guy worries they're already in airports? We'll see you soon. Thanks, Neil. We'll be watching. But up here first, FBI elite squads tracking what they're calling high-risk ISIS suspects. So when it comes to surveilling terrorists, does safety trump your privacy?